Hello, I am Marco Diosagno, I am the director of the Cardiac Surgery Unit in Ancona, uh, Italy. With this video, uh, we would like to share with you uh, a technique we have recently learned uh, from uh, a special friend and talented surgeon, Professor Utz Kappert from Dresden, for uh, a minimally invasive uh, uh, AVR. Our patient was a 77 year old female. She had a severe aortic valve stenosis and was symptomatic for exertion dyspnea. Angiography revealed the absence of a significant coronary artery disease, while the angio CT scan showed severe calcification of the femoral arteries and abdominal aorta. Okay. In patients scheduled for a right anterior trochotomy approach, the preoperative CT scan is important to assess the width of the intercostal space, to assess the position of the aortic valve and the distance between the aortic valve and the surgical axis, to assess the quality of the femoral vessels and of the thoracabdominal aorta and to estimate the size of the aortic annulus. So this is the CT scan of our uh, patient and the frontal view is probably uh, the most important one. This is uh, uh, the conjunction between the manubrium and the body of the sternum and this is the second rib. We know we're going to enter the chest at the level of the third rib that we're going to look for now. So this is the third rib. We know we enter here. So we drop the pointer here and we look for the ascending aorta. Here it is. So we're entering at a distance of 4.8 centimeters from the aortic valve, which is good because this is less than 7 centimeters. From the same uh, frontal view, we can assess the quality of the abdominal aorta and of the iliac and femoral vessels which were um, badly calcified. For this reason, we uh, decided to avoid femoral cannulation and we opted for uh, axillary artery cannulation. A six uh, centimeter skin incision was uh, performed at the level of the upper margin of the third rib. With the patient in single lung ventilation, the pleural space was uh, carefully opened. The memory vessels were identified and uh, double clipped and divided. The third rib was then isolated at its conjunction with the sternum at lower at the level of the third in the costal space. So after that the uh, rib is divided from the sternum following a reversed V incision using an oscillating soap. This technique compared to other techniques provides two important advantages. First of all uh, the rib can be very nicely fixed to the sternum at the end of the operation with a very stabilized chest wall. And second, it extends the working field one centimeter more medially towards the aorta, towards the aortic valve, which can improve visualization of the valve in tricky cases. After that, the soft tissue retractor, a very important tool of this operation, is uh, placed. Due to severe calcification of the femoral vessel and of the thoracabdominal aorta, the decision was made to cannulate the axillary artery for arterial CPB uh, inflow. Isolation and cannulation was done with the standard technique. We use an 8 mm graft interposition uh, that is uh, sutured to the artery using a 5 or a 6 0 proline suture. An additional one centimeter skin incision was done at the groin for uh, femoral vein cannulation. The vein was exposed, a push string with the 5-0 proline suture was done, and the vessel was cannulated using the Seldinga technique. This is the dilator, an extra incision on the vein is done to uh, allow a smoother cannulation of the vein itself. This is a 25mm Livanova wrap cannula, which is advanced up to the superior vena cava under transesophageal echocardiographic control.
the retractor is placed again, CPB is started, and um, the pericardial fat is uh, removed using cautery and paying attention not to damage the um, phrenic nerve. The pericardium is then opened uh, at the conjunction between uh, the aorta and the auricle of the right atrium. It is open horizontally. Uh, eight stay sutures are then placed and fixed to the skin. Four are placed anteriorly and four are placed posteriorly. These are extremely important to obtain good exposition of the aorta and of the aortic uh, valve. In fact, they are able to displace uh, laterally and toward the chest axis the aortic structures that are important for the operation. The retractor is placed again. You see we have a very good exposition of the aorta and of the uh, right atrium and of the right superior pulmonary vein. If you see the pulmonary like vein like this, it means you are in the right place. The post string is placed on it. The heart is a little bit filled and uh, a marrow's vent line is placed for ventricle venting. An arctic needle is uh, placed with the standard technique. We are ready for clamping now. We use a signet clamp. We pull the aorta toward the diaphragm with low flow, the aorta is clamped. Cardioplegia is uh, delivered in anti-grad fashion. A CO2 line is always used in these cases. You see it here behind the left vent line. For the passive implantation, the aorta has to be opened horizontally at about 3 cm from uh, the right coronary artery. Three stay stitches are placed as usual to improve exposition of the aortic valve. You see we have a perfect exposition of the valve which is excised using scissors. This is the right coronary cusp. The left is being removed now. Calcium is um, removed as usual. So the next step is sizing of the annulus. You see the clear sizer is easily passing through the annulus while the white is not. This indicates the size of our valve. So Consistent with uh, our echo and um, CT finding, a small size was selected. So now three sutures are passed uh, at the nadir of each sinus. This will be helpful for parachuting down the valve. The valve is collapsed and prepared for the following implantation. Here is the valve ready. The three sutures are passed through the three eyelets of the valve. The valve is uh, parachuted down, pulling on the three sutures. The correct axial rotational position of the valve is confirmed. The 
inflow and the outflow ring of the valves are sequentially deployed with no tension of the sutures. The deploying system is removed. 30 seconds ballooning at 3 atmosphere is then performed while warm water is poured on the netinol valve. Perfect deployment of the valve is confirmed. The autotomy is closed with the standard technique using um, a double four zero polypropylene running switcher. Pacemaker wires are placed before aortic declamping. De airing is uh, performed by filling the heart by ventilating the patient with low flow and um, hard root venting, the clamp is uh, removed. After 64 minutes of extracorporeal circulation and 39 minutes of cross clamp time, CP beam is weaned off without inotropic support. And chest is uh, closed. We use a steel wire to refix the rib to the sternum. See how stable is the rib with this technique. This is the injection of local anesthesia. We're getting ready for table extubation. And this is the intraoperative echocardiographic control showing nicely working Percival valve. This is the long axis view here showing no intravalve or paravalve leaks. This is table extubation. We believe this is an important component of our 360 degree minimally invasive approach for artery valve replacement. It allows a faster patient recovery and mobilization. In fact, this is our patient a few hours after the end of the procedure, sitting on her bed and working with the physiotherapist. She will be moved to the ward the morning after. This video was meant to show our current uh, minimally invasive approach for AVR with the uh, military academy. Thank you for the attention.